Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. I really love to uh, associate with people who are positive and joyful and smiling. Um, it's just a wonderful thing to be around people who are happy and giving off uh, good vibrations. Uh, and I, I try to do that myself as much as possible. I, I want to uh, uplift people. I want to uh, make them happy and joyful and secure in the promises of Jesus Christ. But uh, there's just so much negativity uh, within this body of Christ. Uh, uh, whether whether it's uh, within a, a brick building or whether it's on the internet, uh, it's just amazing to me the uh, divisions, the backbiting, the gossiping, the criticism. It's it's very sad. It's it's heartbreaking to me, and I, it's a struggle for me to uh, try to stay. Uh, uh, joyful. It's very easy for, for this negativity to bring somebody down. But there, um, there's a, a principle called um, majoring in the minors. Um, so many people want to make a major issue out of minor issues. Um, and they're, they're dogmatic. Uh, they, they will not allow any room for disagreement on, on subjects that we should give grace to each other, that we should allow for differing opinions. Uh, many subjects are not so important that it's going to, it doesn't change uh, the identity of Jesus Christ or the, the means of our salvation. Uh, through faith in Jesus. All these other issues that do not pertain to that are, are minor issues in comparison. And yet, within this body of Christ, so many people are fighting uh, amongst ourselves. I want to mention just a couple of things that I find are very uh, divisive. Uh, I've been on YouTube now for almost five years. And I have tried to uh, avoid this one subject for the longest time. And, and that is the question of Bible translations. I want to tell you a little story about uh, my best friend here in Las Vegas. His name is Tony. Many years ago. I witnessed to him, he was an agnostic, and I witnessed to him, and other people were witnessing to him, and uh, hallelujah, eventually he believed, and he got saved. And of course, we, we encouraged him, he started coming to my weekly Bible studies at my house, and uh, he really enjoyed it, he, and he loved learning, but he really wasn't reading the Bible. And uh, I was, very entrenched in uh, the principle of King James onlyism. Uh, I uh, I had read many books by uh, Dr. Peter Ruckman, who's one of the leading advocates of uh, King James only, and uh, I was a staunch uh, believer and supporter of King James only. And I was really emphatic with my friend Tony that. Uh, he really has to read from that Bible. And, and uh, even though Tony is, is one of the smartest people I know, uh, but he doesn't have a, a advanced formal education. And so in the, the Bible studies, uh, he wouldn't take a turn reading when we were taking our turns reading scriptures because he was... Uh, kind of shy and insecure about his reading. Even though his reading was really quite competent, he was insecure. 
And, and uh, as he tried to read the Bible on his own, he just didn't understand it. Um, it the, uh, if you ever gone to a Shakespeare play, uh, I, I love Shakespeare, but uh, I've seen many of the plays and I've read many of the plays, but it's, it's a much harder language to understand. It's not the language we're accustomed to. So this is part of the problem for Tony and so many people as they read the King James Bible, it's not so easily understood, and he just wasn't getting it. And I told Tony, Tony, if you were uh, moved to, um, let's say, um, some place in, in London where they spoke Cockney English, and English was a lot different than what you're used to, you wouldn't understand it right away, but after a few months of living there, you'd understand it perfectly and probably speak that way. So what I, I'm urging you to do is just read the King, King James Version and keep reading it and eventually you'll feel comfortable with it. But he he never really did get comfortable with it. He struggled with that. And another friend of ours who was not King James only, uh, he convinced Tony to try uh, one of these other translations, NIV, NESB, V or something. Uh, and when Tony started reading that, he just fell in love with the Bible. He just couldn't stop reading it. And, 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 he, and he not only read it, but he understood it. And as the years went by, uh, Tony became much more competent and confident in, in our uh, weekly Bible study sessions. And, and uh, people who were uh, far more advanced in uh, their Bible studies had many years seniority on him. Uh, he reached the point where he was able to teach things to us. And uh, Tony has actually uh, persuaded me on, on some theological subjects. He's persuaded me that I was wrong in certain areas. So, you see, if the only reason he was able to um, understand the Bible and then teach others was because he read a translation that he could actually understand. And that's part of the reason that uh, I moved away from this King James only position. And uh, personally, I, I love the King James Version. I, I read it primarily, but I, I also compare uh, many verses in um, uh, the other translations. I have a parallel Bible that has many translations, and I look at all of them, and it, I find it's helpful to me. But I was dogmatic, I, and I found that, I, looking back on that, I should not have been dogmatic on that subject. Um, another area where I see uh, there's a lot of division and criticism in the body is uh, from people who uh, kind of label themselves as the right dividers. Um, in other words, uh, if you agree with them, you're a right divider. And if you don't agree with them, then you must be a wrong divider. Uh, it, it's quite arrogant to place that title upon yourself as we are the right dividers. Or, well, of course, we need to rightly divide, but I have come to the conclusion that most of these so-called right dividers are, are really wrong dividers. In fact, most of them are what I would call over-dividers. They have divided the Bible up so much that they have uh, excluded all the apostles except the Apostle Paul. And I have... Uh, a video and a playlist on this subject. Uh, Paul only isn't debunked. I won't go into great detail on this, but uh, I see this as another subject or issue where there's a lot of division. And I finally got fed up with it when uh, some of my people, the people who I thought were real friends of mine and we were very like-minded, uh, every time I posted a comment or quoted a, a verse that was from the book of John or non-Pauline verse, 
I was, it was quickly pointed out to me that I can't do that. That's, that's from John. It's, it's not from Paul. And I finally reached the point where I just had to uh, stop being polite about it and, and declare that, wait, you're, you've lost your minds. You're over-dividing. Do you think Paul is the only apostle that preached to Gentiles? Not only in the Bible, but in extra-biblical studies, you'll find that all of the apostles went out and preached all over. They preached to Gentiles. All the, the, the apostles outside of Paul, they didn't just only preach to Jews. So Paul was not the only apostle for the Gentiles. They all preached to Gentiles. And the message for salvation is the same in the book of John as it is in all of Paul's writings. Again, I don't want to be redundant. I've made videos on this. But I hate to see some of the saints being criticized by others when they dare to uh, quote from the book of John. I mean, this is absurd and ridiculous and divisive. And then there are another group of people that want to be fruit inspectors. They, they always want to try to determine if someone is truly saved. Again, I won't go into great detail on this subject because I made a video with the title, Truly Saved? So watch that. But my point here is, I'm going to ask you right now to just mind your own business when it comes to other people's salvation. All you should be doing is tell them, that if you want to live forever in heaven, you must put your faith in Jesus, our Savior. Believe Jesus has the um, ability to give you eternal life. Believe Jesus is faithful to give eternal life to everyone who trusts him for it. Just tell them that. And if they do trust Jesus, they're going to go to heaven. And then after that, it's, it's out of your hands. Stop trying to determine if someone had a true conversion, if they're truly saved. Why don't you spend more time looking in the mirror and evaluate your own life and, and determine how mature you are spiritually? Because I think that it's a sign of spiritual immaturity for you to be continually trying to judge other people's salvation. All of these issues really boil down to this thing that I've spoken out against in the past called dogmatism. Dogmatism turns people into dogs, dogmatically biting and fighting over the smallest things. And not only does it kind of just wear me down sometimes having to deal with it, but it, it is sad to me when I see other saints under attack by dogmatists. So, I just needed to get this off my, my chest. There, there are so many subjects that, uh, that um, we just don't have to agree upon. If you, if you look at the list of people I have as my recommended channels, so those people that I most highly recommend. Uh, we are all in agreement on the deity of Christ and salvation through faith alone. But, but each one of them holds different positions on Bible versions, uh, eternal torment, uh, uh, pre- or post rapture raptures. We should allow for disagreement among ourselves on all these other subjects. All right, uh, I just need to get this off my chest. It's, it's just kind of finally built up. Now, if somebody's watching this video and uh, you're not a Christian at this point, I want to tell you it's very, very simple and easy to be a Christian and have eternal life in heaven. All you've got to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for eternal life. Believe Jesus has the ability you see, Jesus is the eternal God 
who was manifest in the flesh as a man named Jesus Christ. And he is the the sole savior, the only savior, the only one who can save us from death, from eternal death. And he is the uh, sole provider of life. So if you want to have eternal life, you need to go to Jesus to get it. And all you need to do is appeal to him and just believe. Jesus has the power to give it to you and ask him for it. Believe he will give it to you. And he does. And it's really that simple. And once you receive eternal life from Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit of God lives inside you. And don't be surprised if the Holy Spirit starts like transforming you into a, a different kind of person. And after that, <laughs> so you be careful what Christians you associate with because some of them are like so dogmatic and just want to criticize each other. So, so be careful of that. So if you uh, did put your faith in Jesus today, please write a comment let me know. I'd love to hear that. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ. Amen.